I have the privilege today of discussing Fritz Lang's 1944 ethereal noir dreamscape, Ministry of Fear. Based upon a Graham Green novel published the previous year, it doesn't seem to hold the esteem of that other piece of cinematic green, 1949's The Third Man, or even John Ford's The Fugitive for that matter. Although I find Ministry of Fear to be highly commendable, interesting, and involving. A striking piece of unexpected protagonist becomes amateur spy, the kind of thing we usually enjoy from Hitchcock's catalogue. Actually, I find Lang's Hollywood work in general to be rather underappreciated. I feel as though Lang made the best films of their kind throughout the 1940s and 1950s. His noir pictures are as much as I tend to enjoy the genre. A film like Ministry of Fear, however, it more tantalises me as a hallucinatory bizarre tale. Every scene our protagonist, Ray Milan's Stephen Neal, enters we are introduced to some new oddness courtesy of such an unpredictable plot. It is as though every event which furthers this plot carries a certain aura of dynamism, be it pseudo-blind henchmen, a suspiciously possibly staged seance, the icy grins of fundraising Austrian siblings, every Tilby hat well-dressed gruff grunt seems to carry an expressionistic air of evil mystery, a potential Nazi spy as Stephen Neal observes them, terrified from a distance. This is not so much replication of life, not an accurate depiction at all of World War II espionage, which it was obviously quite contemporaneous of, but rather an illustrated sequence of daydreams, a teasing series of what-ifs. From the moment Neil, through pure chance, utter fate, happens upon a charity fate at a train station, rather than immediately board for London, he decides to see his future. He visits a fortune teller, right after guessing the weight of a cake. This fortune teller gives him another answer, the alleged true weight of the cake. So sure enough, Neil goes back and wins the cake. Another gentleman enters this fate as Neil exits the fate, and the runners of this cake competition implore Neil that they misjudged a cake's weight in pounds, though this new estimate that they give is closer to Neil's initial guess prior to he's, him seeing the fortune teller than this new mysterious stranger's guess, and so Neil bids them good day, offers the stranger a nickel, and catches his train for London. Later, he allows a blind man into his carriage shortly before the train has to leave. Neil, a seemingly kind man, shares his cake with the blind chap. Although, this chap is not blind. He uses his cane to attack Neil and escapes the train with the cake in tow. Neil pursues this man, only to witness him be accidentally killed by a German bombing raid. This is so strange. Neil makes his way to London, determined to investigate the organisers of this charity fate, the so-called Mothers of Free Nations. Yeah, I really love this film's mood. It's not a supremely technically adventurous film. In fact, I often recall to this film's mild detriment the frankly superior strangeness of Orson Welles' The Lady from Shanghai, although I still consider the experience of Ministry of Fear to be extremely impressive as well. It does lack that aesthetic volatility of Wells Shanghai, although Ministry of Fear succeeds at trapping a viewer into each of this narrative sets, transfixing all with a potent whiff of what will happen next. To some extent, even film noirs such as The Maltese Falcon or, or Chanla adaptations such as The Big Sleep have a somewhat dreamlike quality, be it the confused plots and conspiracies of Chandler's narratives or the general kookiness which the straight Sam Spade must navigate in Falcon. Ministry of Fear carries this to the next level as Stephen Neal uncovers a Nazi conspiracy within London which stretches to the home office itself. I, can, I could sincerely name this as among my favourite Fritz Lang films, and if we're considering it, one of my favourite film noir entries as well, quite easily. Every now and again we daydream about what might happen if we tug too much at a string and go tumbling down a rabbit hole. What is the purpose of that stranger? Who lives behind that door? What if this cake weighing competition is a front for the funneling of Nazi funds? Hmm. Ministry of Fear is among my favourite films to explore such an inescapable and highly relatable fantasy. I implore anyone viewing this to experience Ministry of Fear and tell me what you think of it. I might be absolutely crazy, I, I could be... I could be completely, completely alone in my, my adoration of this film, but perhaps not. Have a wonderful day.